Yo guys, welcome back to another video. Today is going to be another simple animation how-to and we're going to be looking at animating falling leaves. So let's jump right into it. So similar to the sparkles animation how-to video that I did, we're going to be taking a look at three different types of ways of animating falling leaves. And I've broken them down into these three categories so you can see the first one is what I'm calling just a straight fall. So it's basically just the leaf going from the tree to the ground in a um, somewhat straight line. There's gonna be a little bit of a curve. And the second kind is what I like to call a switchback. So similar to a switchback on a mountain or hiking trail. It's not gonna be doing a full loop, but it is going to be kind of floating back and forth until it hits the ground. And the third one is what I like to call a loop-de-loop. And this one is doing a full rotation and flipping twice before hitting the ground. This third one is basically a uh, combination of the first two, just adding a few more complexities into it. And is really fun to draw and animate, so I'm looking forward to getting into that one. Alright, so let's head into the first one and I'll show you what I did to animate it. So just to give you an idea of um, what I'm working in and how we're going to be doing the animation, I'm working in Clip Studio Paint on my iPad Pro, but you can use anything, any kind of drawing software that has animation function built into it. And as you can see here in my timeline, I already have three different folders set up with a background um, already made for this. And you can see these red lines here, the red, um, these are guides that I've placed to show uh, the the path of the leaves as they're falling. So this is a really good trick if you need to animate something and you're not quite sure if you're going to be able to just be okay with just laying down some keyframes or if you need a visual guide to help you. Uh, this is going to be something extremely useful that you can use for not only something just like this but for basically anything in motion. If you want to be sure of its starting point and its end point, it's always good to lay down, especially when you're working digitally, you can lay down a guide in the background and just use that and follow along that guide as you animate. So now that we have that out of the way, let's jump into the first leaf and let's get started. All right, so for the first leaf, you can see my folder here. Uh, each of these leaves are going to be constrained to 60 frames and we're animating in 24 frames per second But for the first leaf, I wanted to keep it as simple as possible So each frame is going to be or each drawing each cell is going to be three frames long So we're going to be animating on threes except for the very end where I uh, shortened the second to last and made the last frame a little bit or the last drawing a little bit longer just because, just to slow things down and let people um, perceive that the, the leaf has actually landed on the ground. So, as you can see, we have the guideline, but I've also left in some of these keyframes to give us a guide, to give us a, a little head start in animating this. So, what I did originally was I just started with the first leaf and then went in about halfway so that would be frame 10 and then towards the end yeah I drew the last leaf and then worked backwards just to kind of show that so now if you do that if you work with keyframes and you set yourself up it kind of takes the pressure away of animating certain things and you feel like okay now I just need to fill in the gaps and this is really going to help with consistency I don't use keyframes too much it always just depends on what I'm animating but it's always a good rule of thumb if you can lay down some good keyframes it's always going to help you you may feel like you want to just do straight ahead animation all the time but if you can be disciplined enough to actually think think ahead plan out your shot plan out what's happening getting those keyframes down and then just filling in doing the in-betweens and then cleaning up everything in between that it's going to make everything look a lot smoother and uh, give you a lot a good a good consistency with your animation so for the sake of this tutorial though I am gonna go a little quickly and we're just gonna try and um, fill in all the in-betweens in between our keyframes so you can see here let me get my color um, and I have my onion skin on 
And what that does is show me, I have it set right now that you can see a certain number of previous frames and a certain number of frames that are ahead of the current frame that you're on. Just so that I can see a little bit better where I am, what's going on, what's the next frame that's coming up. And with this first leaf, you can see it's just, it's basically an oval. Uh, it's v fairly rounded and that makes it really easy to animate and you don't have to get, you know, you can see I'm not keeping anything, the shape too specific or worrying about it too much. I'm just going to get in and start animating. And this is the beauty of the, the guideline is it can help you um, kind of have a good consistency with uh, the actual shape and size of whatever you're working with. And sometimes you just need to try things out. You'll notice like, oh no, I need to move that forward a little bit. And, or maybe I need to move it back. This is what's good about being able to check with your onion skin on. And so we know we're heading to this point, right? We're heading to this point in frame 10. And basically in between all of that, we just have to go along with the guideline and get to that point in a certain amount of frames. And sometimes, okay, so you know, it's like, okay, I ha this is frame seven and frame 10 is when we get to this point here. So I have seven, eight, nine to fill in up to this green point. So one thing you can do is varying the amount of space in between each frame is going to make it look like it's going faster or slower. It's similar to the uh, squash and stretch technique of animation that gives it a very like fluid motion. And a leaf is something you normally probably normally wouldn't do too much squashing or stretching with, but I like to give even my inorganic things that I'm animating a little bit of life to them. So as long as it's stylistically not like clashing with anything that you're trying to go for, um, you could try that approach out and it's always fun. It, it may look a little more extreme when uh, you're just doing the, the animating frame by frame, but when you play it back, you'll notice that you can get away with a lot, a lot more than you might think you'd be able to. So I'm kind of just, you know, going as I go along, trying out different shapes. This is going to be a little bit different from the demo version that I made previously. So there you go. You can see maybe a little bit towards the beginning. We could smooth that out. You fill this, take this, and this is what's nice about digital. So you can definitely see that it gets, it, it looks, appears smoother when there's more of them close together. So what we'll do, since the beginning looked a little choppy, There you go. And you'll notice some variation in size and stuff, but this would be something that you could come back and clean up later if you wanted to. If you wanted to keep everything really consistent and make sure the size um, was the same the entire time. And you can see without the guide, it looks a little bit more natural already. And since this is just mostly the purpose of showing you how to do this animation in general, we're not gonna try and keep anything too perfect here. I think that gives you a good idea, especially just the, the first leaf right there. So yeah, that's the first leaf, looking pretty good. And let's move on to the second one, the uh, switchback leaf. All right, so let's do the second leaf now. And you can see this one is a little different in shape and color. Just wanted to give it something to differentiate it here. This one has a little indention, kind of like a cherry blossom leaf. Um, I like I like animating this type of leaf. It's really fun. It gives it a little bit more variety than just a straight oval shape. So for this one, you can see I have the guideline as well, and where that curves out here and here is where we're gonna have it come up, stop at a point, and come back down. 
and it'll come up again, stop at a point, and fall back onto the ground. And I'll show you here, we have some keyframes just like before for the first one. And even with just these keyframes, you can get a good idea of what the animation is already going to be. So that's always a good indicator that you have um, some pretty solid keyframes down. And let's just jump into it like the first one and start going along and animating here. So just going to be following the guideline and we know that it's going to be coming out here at this curve. So we will be deviating a bit from the guideline there. Oops. But until then, just keep things straightforward. I'm not worrying too much about the shape. So we know frame nine has this one here. So we need to work our way up to that. And we're on frame six. So we are going to need to kind of curve it down a little bit here. And this is where you can do some of that squashing and stretching. It's really fun. Putting in a, a somewhat dy dynamic or exaggerated frame every now and then is fun. And as long as you keep it within the means of the what the object actually is, it'll normally look pretty cool. All right, and so you can see here, let's take a look at that because I wanted to stop there for a second. That's why I have a few more frames in there. Okay, it's a little quick. It's a little fast coming in there. So maybe, <clears throat> maybe we can space this out here. we can just do move everything up just a little bit kind of give it a more natural feel Let's check that okay I think that's all right for now let's keep going and we can double check once we have more things filled out and as you can see, the spacing here in this one, there's 27 drawings within the 60 frame parameters that we have. And not all of these are on threes like the first leaf. Some of these are on ones, some are on twos, and some are on threes. So we're mixing different timings and spacings so that we can get a, a little bit more of a varied motion in the animation. And I'm just using what I had for the demonstration that I previously did. So we're just kind of trying to match it to that because I felt like it, it worked previously. So should be okay going for the tutorial here. I'm going to kind of draw it dipping down a bit. We know this is the next keyframe, right? And that's going to be on 2019, 18. So we're going to 18. So it's a bit of, bit of a space that we got to cover here. This is where you could do something like stretching it a bit without distorting it too much. It's going to make it look like it's going fast, but it'll help you cover ground that you need to cover. So you can see we had too many here. We need to kind of space things out a little bit more with some of these. We gotta cover more ground in a shorter amount of time. <clears throat> so let's take a look at that real quick. Okay, so looking pretty good. I think what we'll have to do here is just take everything, move it down just a little bit. As long as the the flow and the motion still works, should be okay. And again, this, this would be something that you come back a little later add some frames in or manipulate it a little bit work on the spacing what I'm actually going to do here is take this pull it back 
here you go and so now we want this to come up to a point here where it's gonna stop and then so we want it to slow down a little bit so I'm gonna draw them close together and then we know our next one 25 is right here on the floor gets hit touches the ground let's work our way over there and do a little curve here and boom all right let's check that out Okay, so I still think the beginning is a little, it's a little choppy, it's a little quick. Um, one of the things here is we have all three of these in 60 frames. So we're working within a parameter already set up. And what you could do here is you could just come in into some of these longer drawings, some of these longer cells that are two or three frames long, and just add some more in-betweens to smooth things out. But I think this gives you a good idea of the... Uh, the animation just for tutorial sake here the main thing we wanted to focus on was coming out to a point on each of these curves stopping drawing more frames closer together at these points zipping through the fast parts coming up again kind of uh, making sure we try and capture the momentum and the weight that happens within this so let's take a look at it one more time Okay, yeah, looking pretty good. And if we put the first leaf in there too, now you can see both of them. Let's take the guides off. One more look. And you can tell the speeds of them falling are different, even though it's in the same amount of frames. It's cool to have a varied um, animation like that. All right, so that does it for the second one. And the last one is the third leaf. And let's take a look at it and get into it. All right, time for the last leaf. This is the loop-de-loop. -loop. As you can see here, it's another different shape and color. This one is oval, but has a slight point to it at the end. And you can see the guideline here. We're going to be following the guideline a little bit closer than on the switchback one, which is just more of a uh, loose reference, really. This one is going to help us get the positioning of the loops correct. And as you can see, I have some keyframes drawn in. The most important parts are, I think, when it's flipping over like this. And you can see it has that figure eight shape. This is a really good way to show that something's flipping. Uh, you could have this in one or two frames, but what I, what I did for this is, most of this is animated on twos. And then for these frames right here, so it's 10 and 20, 21, sorry. These are threes. So these are held a little bit longer than the other frames. And what that's gonna do is just, you know, give your eye a little bit more uh, visual, some more time on the screen, and it's gonna it's gonna stand out just a little bit and give a nice little flare to that looping animation right there. And we're not gonna worry as much about everything else around that. So let's jump right into it and get started. We know that we're working up to 10 and we're at three here, so. We're not covering as much ground as the other two variations. And this shape is similar to the first leaf, but just keeping in mind that there's a little point there. And so we're gonna wanna start looping around here. And what you could do here, you could have, as you can see here, this is, this is already a little stretch right here. And we'll put, we'll put a frame in here. Let's see if this works. So this one was elongated, and then we're gonna come around. So this would be the stretch, and then we're gonna squash a little bit here. This might be a little bit uh, too much of an exaggeration, but we'll see. Always fun to try things out and then see how it works out. So it's gonna give it's gonna give it kind of an exaggerated sense of weight, which is okay because that's what I'm going for here. You know, I, I like that kind of animation, and it's gonna make the loop seem a little bit more accentuated and exaggerated yeah I think it works out I think that works cool 
So let's keep going. So it flips, comes over, and then now we want to kind of have the momentum going back down. We know that our next frame, our next keyframe is here at 21 and we're at 13. So we have, we have some space to make up here, but it's okay because we have quite a few frames to do it. Just going to be drawing it a little bit longer than normal, kind of giving it a, a gradual stretch there, showing that it's going a bit quicker. Maybe start going back to the normal size around here. Sometimes you gotta be patient. Just make sure you're getting the shape right. Always be something you wanna come back to later. The other thing is I'm, I'm kind of drawing a little bit too small. When you're not doing any stretching or squashing, um, it's important to try and keep the size as consistent as you can so there's not too much variation going on otherwise it will be kind of confusing that's actually something I try and trying to get better at so this one is gonna come down like this and since there's a little bit of space here um, it's probably gonna seem like it's kind of shooting off more into the loop here so let's see if that works or if we need to come in and clean it up a little bit is pretty quick. I think we need to um, fill in the parts right after it in order to get better read on that. So let's try. Yeah, always remember to flip through. Play through the animation. Double checking things constantly. That's another good way to get consistency down. And then here, we're really just gonna look it towards the finish line. So we know it's 29. It's coming in at 29, and we're at 26. So this is gonna seem pretty fast, but I think we can do it. This one's gonna be shooting in. So 28, and the next one's 29. We'll start getting the shape back here, and then when it lands. Right, let's check to see if that loop looks okay. Oh, there's something. Yeah, there might be something a little off there. Let's see. I think I think it is that jump. Oh, that's what it is. I accidentally have uh, two things drawn right there. So now we know for sure. We kind of just need to go back here. So sometimes it's better to kind of work backwards if you're stuck in a spot you're not really sure what's missing. This can be a good stretch frame like we had before. And we'll redo this one, kind of going into that. Let's see if that was enough. Yeah, I think that looks okay. Again, we're not going for anything perfect right now. This would maybe be something that you wanna come back in and do another pass on or clean up some of the other frames. If you're just going for a rough animation style, which is something that I actually really love, um, you know, I would throw some color on this and maybe call it a day. It just depends on what I'm working on. If uh, I'm trying to go for something more clean or, you know, Sometimes you just gotta try different things out and see what you like the best. Not everyone loves a perfect, clean style. All right, let's look at all three of these now. Yeah, looks pretty good. Definitely would wanna go back in and clean up a few spots, maybe add in a few more frames, but overall I think it looks really good. And let's take a look at this here and I'll stop this and play the demo one. So this is the demonstration one. I think you can see here, since I wasn't as rushed doing these ones, it looks a little bit more fluid, a little bit more natural. And now here, if we take a look with the colors in as well, you can really see 
that with some added color it makes any kind of um, you know it kind of makes the animation feel more natural if there were a few spots that may have seemed um, too not smooth enough or you weren't sure about sometimes with the color there and just being able to envision it with the finished product in mind will give you a good sense of, of you know how clean or how smooth you really need to be during the animation process and then by no means am I saying like cut corners or like don't ever try and get a clean animation um, just if that's not what you're going after don't kill yourself over trying to make things so perfect so smooth and so clean that was something I, I definitely struggled with a lot in the past and still do to this day and it's very freeing to just let yourself go and get a finished piece of work get a finished animation even just making this tutorial i've done something here you know i've made another animation i've been practicing it myself doing this tutorial so just feeling good about anything like that as well is a good reason to not worry too much about the small things What's up guys? Thanks for watching the video. I do want to give a quick shout out and a little reminder that I do have some animated streaming screens over on Etsy. So if you want to see how I use these types of animations in my own work, you can go and check those out. Any kind of support is super appreciated. Thanks for watching the video and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.